you for joining us today and welcome to my sewing room. Well, maybe I should have said welcome to my serger room because today we have so many exciting ideas, tips and tricks for you using the serger instead of the sewing machine. This lovely white blouse is made totally on the serger and you might not know this, but sergers go about three times as fast as a sewing machine and do lots of neat tricks we're going to show you today. This lovely blouse was made in a jiff. It simply has straight strips of lace up and down the front, all surged together in no time flat. A lot of times ladies love to make beautiful lingerie for themselves or for gifts. This is a sweet little camisole made in probably less than an hour and a lovely half slip to go along with the camisole. When we teach classes out around the country, a lot of times, uh, as I say when we, when Kathy McMakin teaches this particular serger class, she has the ladies to make this christening dress and guess what? The dress, the slip, and the bonnet can be finished in less than three hours. Does that tell you how fun and quick it is to sew on the serger? This is a really sweet little summer outfit for a baby. It has a little top and it has some little panties, as sweet and as quick as you could ever hope for. Another little summer dress for a little girl. This time the, the details are a little bit different. This features flat lock. Can you see how pretty that pink emphasizes the, the lines of this little day gown? And it has a little ruffle on the bottom which once again features that wonderful flat lock, this time in a really bright, pretty colored thread. We mustn't forget the little boys. This little outfit is a cute little outfit for a little boy that features serger techniques up and down the front, a rolled hem, it has Swiss trims, all different kinds of Swiss trims, down the front, also on the little sleeves. One more outfit for a little tiny baby boy has serger techniques, some little uh, diaper covers, and little bunny buttons right down the front. This is fast and easy sewing. This funny looking little box here in front of me is called a serger, and I am going to share with you, along with my guest that you'll meet in a few minutes, how to do some of these fabulous techniques that make sewing so quick and so easy. Let's go over to the technique board. An overview of French sewing by serger techniques begins with lace to lace. This particular, these two particular pieces of lace have been stitched together with rolled hem. Now, flat lock is my stitch for these two pieces of lace which have been stitched together and this shows how it looks when it's done in ecru rather than bright purple which I used for teaching purposes. Lace to fabric is very similar to the technique used on the sewing machine. Leave about oh a quarter of an inch of fabric exposed, put the lace down and roll him over that. This is what it looks like after it is finished. A neat little way of doing pin tucks, this time with a rolled hem on your serger, is to press it and then simply do a little rolled hem. You can put colors, you can do white on white. This particular sample shows how pretty it is to use colors. Kathy McMakin will demonstrate more of these serger techniques. She will begin with the most widely used heirloom serger technique, lace to fabric. Kathy, thank you so much for coming on the show today. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Martha. Today we're going to teach you all about French sewing by serger. And the first technique that we're going to teach you is lace to fabric. Now the most important thing with lace to fabric is to always allow your fabric to extend beyond the edge of your lace at least a quarter of an inch or so. You can always have more over there if you'd like. Um, your serger is going to cut off what you don't need. So what you're going to do is place your your lace and your fabric underneath your serger so that your needle thread is going to fall on the heading of the lace. Now on this serger we have two needle marks and we can move over to the right hand side of that needle mark and we're ready to serge. So let's serge and see what happens. We're going to serge right along and you can see that this little fabric is being cut off of the edge. 
and the fabric and the lace is now attached and it's just rolled right together. The seam can either fall on the front or it can be a seam allowance on the back, either one. Now we're going to teach you another technique, fabric to fagoting. Our second technique that we will be showing you today is fagoting to fabric. Fagoting to fabric is really fun, it's really easy, but it may take a little bit of practice. The most important thing about fagoting to fabric or entredeau, which is just small fagoting, would be to put your fagoting to your fabric right sides together, and we would like for our needle thread of our serger to fall right in the ditch of our fagoting. So what we'll do is we'll place this underneath our foot, and this particular foot has several markings on the front, and we will use one of those markings to line up the bar of our fagoting. And when we get ready to sew, we'll just make sure that our fagoting is going to stitch right in that ditch. And we're going to cut off all of the excess. Kathy, the machine cuts it off, doesn't it? That's exactly right, Martha. That's the reason that it makes it look so nice. And this also alleviates two extra steps that are done when you do fagoting to fabric by sewing machine. Uh, normally, we stitch in the ditch with our sewing machine, then we have to trim, and then we zigzag. Your serger will do it all in one step. Now, our third technique will be lace to lace. Lace to lace is a very interesting technique when done on your serger because you can either have your seam allowance on the front and it will form more, most like a cording or a tuck as we call it, or you can have your seam allowance on the back so that it doesn't even show. The technique is very easy and very simple to do. What you do is you place your two pieces of lace on top of each other, either right sides together, if you would like for it to be a seam or wrong sides together if you would like for it to be a tuck. And then we're just going to serge these two headings together. And as we've mentioned before, your serger is now set up on a three thread rolled hem so that we get a nice fine stitch. Now this serger, we have to serge with the headings of the lace underneath this wall that extends above the foot. That is going to mean that we will serge right along our headings. So let me show you how easy this is. If you'll notice, we're not cutting off anything. Our laces are not even touching our blade, but even if they did, it wouldn't matter. It would just trim them just a hair, and all the excess would be rolled in. So you can see how easy it is to do lace to lace on your serger. Next, we will show you how to do a serger tuck. Serger tucks are really, really easy as well. The best thing about serger tucks is this is a way that you can add decorative thread to your serged garments. If you'll look, we have some threads here. This is gold metallic, and it's really fun to serge with. Um, it does go along with heirloom sewing, too, if you want to add a little glitz to your sewing. <laughs> this is um, variegated cord, and it will also run through your serger. You can put it in either your upper looper or your lower looper. And these are serger tucks like you saw on the board. The way you do serger tucks is very simple. What you'll do is you'll take a piece of fabric, and you will fold it. You can mark your tucks, and then you fold and press with an iron, or either finger press if you'd like. And then what we would like to do is just serge right along the fold of this fabric. Now, if you happen to trim off a little fabric, that's okay. It's just going to serge right in, and it'll be great. So this is what we're going to do. This serger has a a wall that sticks up from the foot, and we want to place the fold of our fabric just underneath the wall. We're just going to mash our gas pedal, and we are going to surge through, and the top side of our fabric is going to be just beautiful, and it's going to look a lot like this. 
Kathy, thanks so much for showing us those Easy Serger tucks. You're welcome, Martha. And you know what, Kathy? I have a blouse over here where I'm going to show our audience exactly what the serger tucks look like on a lady's blouse. This is very easy to do, as you've just seen. This is the plain blouse, which can be transformed really quickly with serger tucks into one that looks like this. And you saw how quick and easy it was. As Kathy shared with you, now this is what I create before I begin the tucks. I create the little fold lines. I've marked them on there and I pinch those up and put the um, serge, do the serger tucks on the edge of those folds, stitch the lace to both sides, do the serger tucks on both sides, stitch the lace in here, create a piece of fabric, cut it out, and this whole blouse would probably take about 30 minutes to make. Serger tucks can also be used on a quilt square of our beautiful heirloom quilt. I'd like to share that with you next. Serger tucks are so beautiful, they really show up and they really are pretty. This particular quilt square on our lovely Ecru heirloom quilt has three rows of serger tucks, three rows of serger tucks, and three rows of lace. You remember that Kathy showed you how to make the serger tucks, and here is the little piece stitched in purple to show how to do that. This quilt square is so fast, one side of the fabric, I put three serger tucks. Now, how did you make those serger tucks? Let me refresh your memory one time that Kathy showed you. To fold the tuck, turn it under, and do a rolled hem down the tuck. All right, the next tuck, I fold it, turn it under, and stitch a rolled hem down the tuck. After the three, after the strips are made with the tucks, simply put the lace to the fabric, serge it together with a rolled hem, and that's it. My doll really likes to have lots of dresses, and when I make them on the serger, she can have a lot more because it's so fast. Next, I'll share with you a lovely doll dress made on the serger. My little doll has a miniature fancy band in the yoke of her dress. If you can see that. She has a little miniature fancy band in the sleeve, this pretty little puff sleeve with a little silk ribbon around the bottom. And then she has a real fancy band in her skirt. All of this done on the serger. Very, very quick and very, very easy. I have pulled the so-called ingredients over here so I can show you. The first row was entredeau. And you know what a funny name for entredeau? Some people say this looks like a railroad track for ants. I thought that was kind of a cute saying, so I like to tell people about it. The next strip is lace insertion. Insertion is lace that has two straight sides. And the next strip is a pretty piece of embroidered insertion, in this case from Switzerland. And this is what the back of the fancy band looks like. It is so neat. When I do French sewing by serger and turn it over to the back, I think, gosh, that is really pretty. The seams are all finished. You see how pretty that rolled hem is? to attach the entredeau to flat fabric, how pretty the rolled hem is to attach the insertion to the Swiss and the same here and the same here, and even attaching the entredeau to the gathered lace as on this ruffle. It is absolutely a beautiful seam and so perfectly finished. And one of the most exciting things is it only takes a very short while to do French sewing when you use the serger absolutely everywhere you can use the serger. Another item that I really like to add to my doll clothes is the very beautiful and ever increasingly popular silk ribbon embroidery. Kathy Brower will be with us next to share with you another exciting technique and a very easy technique on embellishing doll clothes or anything else with silk ribbon embroidery. I can't wait to see what Kathy has for us today. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you, Martha. Well, today I have, I'm going to teach our viewers the running whip stitch, which is used very similar to the stem stitch in regular embroidery. Um, also, when you're doing silk ribbon embroidery, if you have a matching floss, um, it's good to use a floss if you want a thin vine, but you can also use a very a two millimeter silk ribbon to make your stems and your vines. I'd like to show you this beautiful quilt we have today. Um, the designer of this quilt took a beautiful purchased cotton 
blanket and did beautiful ribbon work uh, in each square. This has the rip stitch or the, the stem stitch in it as the vine to put the flowers and the leaves around. We have beautiful squares with gorgeous, all the leaves and the lazy daisy stitches that you've learned before. And on the back side, there's beautiful silk, different silk ribbon designs in each square. The back of this quilt, if I could show you, has been batted with just cotton fabric and then hand quilted with fringe along the edges. Let me go on to teach you how to do this stitch. As you see up here, I've used this as a vine with floss, but it's also great to have a stem, like if you're doing roses or flowers that need a supporting stem. The first thing you'll do is you'll make a row of just plain straight stitches and do however many you need to do, curve them, roll them. Up here I've curled them. And then on, when you come up on your last stitch at the end, you'll begin, let me lay this down so I can roll that thread around. You'll begin rolling this silk ribbon around your stitches like this, just wrapping it around your stitches. And you want to kind of keep your thread, as you see with my finger, I'm keeping my thread flat so that it doesn't twist. And you get a great, a nice, smooth, straight stem or a vine. Kathy, is it okay if your thread does twist? Oh, it's certainly okay. Um, you don't want it to twist too much because then you'll get kind of a messy, really twisted looking stem. But it's not hard to keep it flat. If it twists a little, just leave it. It's hard to tell. Mine twisted right here and you can't even tell. Um, so it, it's a little easier when, you get, when you've got it right under your nose and you're working on it like that. <laughs> when you're working on it far away like this, it's a little bit harder. But as you see, it makes a beautiful stem and it makes a beautiful vine. And that's really the most supporting. That supports your flowers and your leaves. And it makes your work all come kind of flow together. It's easier to design when you've worked in some stems and some vines. What is that that you put in the top row of stitching there, Kathy? The little pink flowers? These, tell me what you did there. These are simply the leaves and the flowers. I'm glad you mentioned that, Martha. The leaves and the flowers are both Japanese ribbon stitches. And as you can see, this is a good example of how a simple Japanese ribbon stitch becomes a flower here and a leaf here. Oh. And the great thing about stem stitches and vines, it adds green in your sprays of flowers and in your floral arrangements which is really important and it supports your leaves. It, I think it's, it's much easier than the regular stem stitch, which is stitching over and over, making kind of a roping stitch. It takes a long time to do that and this is foolproof. <laughs> All right, well, Kathy, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. This is such a beautiful quilt, Kathy. I would really like to have one of these silk ribbon embroidery quilts. And next I have for our viewers a beautiful uh, lingerie bag made totally quickly and easily on the serger. I am finding more and more women who sew are sewing purely for the fun of it. They are enjoying making gifts, gifts for other people, Christmas gifts. They are enjoying making home decoration items, crafts, anything to just come home from a busy day at the office and relax. The thing I have for you today is a really sweet serger bag. It's a serger lingerie bag to use when you travel or to give as a gift for anyone on your list. That is, any lady on your list. This little bag is made out of a robin's egg blue fabric with all of the wonderful Swiss trims in the middle, a perky little bow. It is made totally on the serger, so you know how fast and easy this is. Now let me show you underneath, let me pull up this gathered lace. Do you see how the gathered lace was put on the edge and simply surged and then how it flips down just really, really pretty? This little bag happens to, be, happens to have batting in it. It's padded. But you can make it with padding or without. All right, serger, here we go. Surge together all of the different elements which embellish the center of the bag going all the way around the, from the front all the way to the top. Okay? Then I put the two layers of batiste on either side. Can you see how I stitched on either side? Then at the bottom is the third layer, which is the lining. So I have three layers of batiste now, and I surge together the three layers. In this particular one, I also have batting in it. After surging the bottom, at that point, I bring the lining back and turn it right side out. Now then, I have the outside, the batting, and the lining. All right. This way, I've, here is my serger seam. 
Then I come in here and I serge the side pieces. Now I have to make this into a little pointed top. I really, a, a square top would be okay, but I think the pointed top is prettier. So I come to the top and I cut a little triangular shape here, trim away the top to make it into a little triangular shape. Then I turn it right side out since I've already surged up the side there. I turn it right side out, turn it around, and I will gather my lace, lay it back on the fabric, the gathered lace edging, serge it on, and then my gathered lace, it will be almost finished. Do you remember the last thing on that cute little serger bag was a perky little bow, which was very easy to make also. Using two different types of ribbon, I folded it, and then I go in behind, pinch it up, and wrap it to make a pretty little bow. That is my serger, serger lingerie bag. I have a lovely pillow to share with you next, a pillow you can act pillowcase you can actually sleep on. This elegant pillowcase, really to be slept on on your bed, can be made in five minutes. Yes, you heard me correctly. It can be made in five minutes. I'm going to show you how. On the serger, of course. Look at the lovely fancy band on the bottom of this pillowcase. For your bed or gift for a bride and groom, wouldn't this be lovely to make a pair of these? And that would take you 10 minutes. I serge together the laces and the embroideries. All right, here, let me just show you how. All right, here is a miniature version of this. I've surged together the pillowcase, the laces, the embroideries, the fancy band. Then I turn it right sides to right sides. It doesn't matter that these are kind of sticking out. Simply surge along this side, surge along this end. The pillowcase is completely finished. And actually, this would be a lovely baby gift to make a baby size pillowcase. Go ahead and make a little pillow to stick in it. But this is as easy as I am showing you. It takes almost no time. And this lovely pillowcase right here using a serger, I can truly indeed make one of these in five minutes. Multiply it times two, that is 10 minutes. Now, wouldn't this be an elegant gift to give to a bride or a groom? Something that would be terribly personal, something that they would not get from just the same of and more of, I think it would be very appreciated. I love to collect antique clothes. Come with me into my attic and I will share some of my very favorites with you. It seems to me that christening dresses tell the most interesting stories. Oh, how I wish I knew who had made this dress. But I do know a little bit about this dress. May I share this with you? This little dress, because of the straight sleeves right here, I tend to believe it was made in and around 1880, 1875. Then look, this is called a conversion technique. These little inner sleeves, kind of a puff sleeve, have been added later. Because as the turn of the century rolled around, the 1890s and the 1900s, and remember christening dresses are meant to be passed down through the generations, and of course the older ones are no exception to that rule. As styles began to change a little bit, this family had added a little puff sleeve to go in the neckline of this lovely christening dress. The skirt of this dress is perfectly elegant also, with its sets of six tucks traveling down, and then it has... Um, three lovely ruffles right on the bottom. On the back of this christening dress is another very typical 1880 feature. Since the dresses were passed down from generation to generation, there was a drawstring that went around the neckline of the dress. I don't know if you have had the experience of having a grandchild or a child child's neck get too big for the christening dress before the occasion. You know how big babies get and how fast this day and age. But these mothers were very smart. They put a drawstring in the top of the dress and then it did not really matter what size the baby was. They could simply pull the strings in the top of the dress and there was another, at one time that is, half of this is gone, then there was another drawstring in the waist of this dress so they could actually make this dress fit almost any size baby. Thank you so much for joining me today in my sewing room. I will certainly look forward to seeing you next time.